yeast in this bowl and a cup and two-thirds of warm water. That's 110 degrees. Wrist temperature. Yes. Dissolving it? Dissolving it, which is fully dissolved. Sure. Don't it eat smells it. Smells like beer. Mmm. <laughs> then what we're going to do is take our dry ingredients and add them to our wet ingredients. Mix your dry ingredients together mm. with your fingers a little first. Right. Put your salt on top. Okay. What we've got here is two teaspoons of salt. That's not the exciting sea salt that I was Hoping, hoping that it would be. It glistens. And our magic pepper All bunny. All glitters is not salt. <laughs> Ooh, poetry Go motion. pepper bunny, go! Yay! It goes pepper and bunny. goes and goes and goes and goes. Now, we're going to just mix these up with our fingers. And our fingers are clean. Right, Jeffro? We washed them special. <laughs> <laughs> now what we're going to do is um, slowly add the flour. Right. Mixing well in between additions. I'm just I gonna will mix it. Go mixer. Mix master. Now if you have a food processor, we chose not to do it this way because we initially thought we were doubling it and that we couldn't then put it in the food processor, but then we decided we weren't going to double it. So we could put it in the food processor, but decided not to. Then you miss all the fun of playing That's with right. Play-Doh. That's right. <laughs> Besides, I, I assume most people don't have one. This is a great project for kids. And we make use of them so Busy much. hands. You want to keep those And you really can't mess busy. it up. I, idle hands are the devil's playthings. <laughs> That's right. Satan yes. plays with children. Stir harder! I'm Stir fine. harder! Zombie guy. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Ooh. Mm. So, pretty soon we're going to have to just dig our hands in there, aren't we? Yep, this is a hands-on project. This is where little hands come in handy. That's right. So, this is a, you know, the great thing about making pizza is that it's really a family project. You've got kids, What if you don't have a family? Partners, cats, <laughs> Then it's whatever. kind of a pain in the butt if you're all by yourself. Yeah, then you might as well find somebody. You should invite people over. Yeah. Have them help you at least eat it then. Right. Who knows what I do when I'm alone, you know? I could, <laughs> I could make scary. pizza. <laughs> do you think you could? Huh? Huh? Do you? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> <That's my turn. laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get our hands ready here. Yeah, Ooh, move this yeah. board out of the way. Let's yep. use some... A little bit of olive oil, maybe? Doesn't call for it, but that would help get it out of that bowl better, probably. Sure would. Let's just put a little bit in there. Olive oil is the secret ingredient. Genevieve's secret. <laughs> you just told everybody, Genevieve. Oops. Now what? <laughs> now, we're going to form it into a ball, and we're going to put it in a bowl and cover oh, it with plastic. Oh, no, wait. No, you got to first... No, that won't work because it won't rise very well. What you have to do first is oh. dry off your surface area, mm -hmm. and then just throw a little bit of flour down, and then dump that thing out onto it. Right. We have to knead it for a while. That's right. Okay. Go ahead, Jeffro. Need away. <laughs> I really need it. <laughs> need, need it like you want it. That's all right. Yeah. Did you have to knead the dough at the pizza restaurant where you worked? We had a, a machine. huge machine. Obviously. See, I know how to make dough, but I only need, I have like a hundred pound recipe. And anything smaller than that is really hard to make. Let me show you a little kneading trick. You want to be more forceful. You need to press it all the way down with the palm of your hand and you have to keep flipping it over. You can do it with one hand and that keeps your other hand dry. I learned that on a cooking show somewhere. But, uh, I don't usually do that. Today I'll try. Wow, you're a powerhouse, Mary. It does help build muscles. That's yeah. why those pioneer women were so strong. That's part of the reason, I think. And they drink strong ale. Okay, once we've got this all balled up, what are we gonna do with it? Okay, well, we're going to knead this for about 10 minutes because it wants you need to get it in a different texture than it is now. It needs to be a lot smoother and springier. 
And you want to go for the consistency of your earlobe. That, I read that somewhere. I didn't get that mm. off the cooking show. But um, Make sure those ears then you're going to put it in an oiled bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and put it in the warmest place in your house that isn't hot, just warm. And let it sit for about an hour and a half till it's doubled. Yes. This is a time-consuming pizza. We're so we're going to need, and we'll see you in a minute. Less than a minute to you. Buongiorno. <laughs> Welcome to our hearty tomato sauce ingredients. We're going to go over the ingredients with you because some of you may not recognize these in their natural form in these stores. So we're going to help you out here and go over the ingredients first. This is a pretty fiber intensive sauce here, which um, is great for those of you who are concerned about your colons. We have our herbs that are going to be our flavoring in the sauce. We've got a little bit of thyme, oregano, and uh, basil. Basil. But Try. if you're concerned about your colon, can't you just eat those potato chips with Alestra in them? Oh, <laughs> that might do something to your colon. You'd have to eat a lot. <laughs> what would it do? <laughs> okay, we'll on to um, we'll a more say, uh, it's nice It's dinner acceptance. time. We have carrot. Um, we have parsley. We have chopped onions. Sliced mushrooms. Um, got a little bit of miso over here. We'll go over what miso is. It's a fermented soy product. Go for organic. Mm -hmm. Yep. We've also got chopped tomatoes. We use organic canned chopped tomatoes. These are really nice. They're almost in their their purest form. Just they look very fresh. I remember loving this song. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm kind of like a we got happy a little Donna right Summers now. going on right now. Everyone's happy in our kitchen. We've also got basil. Um, turnip and... No, wait, turnip? Turnip? No, no. Yeah, turnip? Turnip? Parsnip. Turnip? Parsnip. Everyone knows what that is. Everybody, one, two, three, all together, kids. Green pepper. Smart. In Ohio, Remember. sometimes they call them mangoes. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Remember okay. Donna Summer is that mixed up kid and thanks God it's Friday? No, I never saw that. I think oh, I totally young. missed that. She wanted to be a disco queen and the that DJ would play Foster. her record. Oh my God. Thank God it's Friday. Was, yeah, Jody Foster? No, that's Underage Freaky Friday. Underage girls were sneaking oh. into the disco. <laughs> it's Freaky Friday. <laughs> freaky Friday. <laughs> Whatever. Thank God count. it's Freaky it's all Friday. Same. All right. So um, anyway, these are the ingredients. And we're going to come back to you and show you how to mix them all together to create a stewy pizza sauce. Mm. Mm. All right, baby. Gonna get some love tonight. All right. We're ready to cook up our sauce. Oh, Go off <laughs> I'm a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> Half a okay, all right, guy. We're gonna have you um, do Don't. a little saute in here. You're gonna saute I'm ready to a very hard, um, our hard winter vegetables first, and then add some things in a few minutes here. Okay. Go ahead and add the onions. Go ahead, Jeffro. Onions. Onions. We're gonna add that. We have quite a bit of garlic. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> this one, right, but those don't go until a little bit later. Mm. Oh. Go ahead and add. Whenever a recipe calls for one clove of garlic, I add one head of <laughs> garlic. <laughs> yes! Like He's very healthy. Garlic. That's our kind of guess. I love the garlic. If I could smoke it, I would, but it's, it's too <laughs> moist. <laughs> have our um, turnips here. These God are knows turnips. what that would do. No, 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 yeah. parsnips, 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 turnips. They're, you know, those so root vegetables. a little vegetables. bit of carrot in it's there, too. It's partially parsnips with some carrots. Yes. <laughs> yes. Parsnips are no worse. Right? I gotta stir this right. action. Yeah. From day one, I'm um, on that job. You're so good at this. Master stir man. There go the turnips. Bring it on. Turnips. Turnips are a little whiter in, uh, in appearance than parsnips. Parsnips are more of an off-white. So if you're thinking about painting your house in parsnip or turnip, that would be the difference. <laughs> At this point, though, don't try and separate them because they're too well mixed together. Right. Now. now we're also going to add our carrots, which, as Jeffro pointed out handily a moment ago, are going to sweeten this sauce up a little bit because parsnips and turnips tend to be a bit bitter. A little bitter. Yes, but this they will are. This be sweeter. Take yeah, the edge off. They're going to add some serious bulk to this dish. <laughs> okay, so we're going to just saute this for about. Oh, about 10 minutes until everything's nice and soft, and then we're going to go ahead and add a couple other things. So we'll be right back with you folks there in TV land. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's finish that sauce up to Donna Summers. All right. Okay. Woo. Still just sauteing that same stuff you saw us sauteing yeah. before. Mm -hmm. It's a little yeah. more cooked. 
Oh yeah, they've been uh, all those hard root vegetables are nicely simmer in there. Little tip, don't eat the hard root vegetables raw. <laughs> well, okay. from the cooks. Parsnips are great in salad if you slice them thin. There's and I think my granddad ate turnips raw. They're very good for you. Okay, we have some green peppers. Plop. And we're going to add our herbs, um, the thyme, the dried basil, and the dried oregano. Plop. And we're going to add about two and a half cups of mushrooms. I'm going to use about half of these because we're going to use some of them in the actual spinach stuffed crust pizza that we're going to make. You know, this is quite a recipe, actually. If you could smell this. I can't wait. Yeah, smell that it. sauce is going to be really good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And we're going to simmer all of this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our tomatoes and the wine. Do we yeah. do that soon or do we wait till the wait till we can saute this up a little bit? Gonna let the mushrooms sweat it out a bit, cook out Whoa. some of the moisture. Genevieve, that's a lot of ingredients. It is a lot of ingredients and I'm gonna go over those with you folks in TV land in just a minute. So get your pens and paper ready. I and kinda like the raw turnip. Right. Our hearty tomato sauce recipe and our whole wheat pizza dough crust. First recipe, hearty tomato sauce, right quickly. Two tablespoons of olive oil, one large onion finely chopped, three to six cloves of garlic minced, one medium carrot, one medium carrot finely chopped, one medium parsnip, and one medium turnip finely chopped. There is a difference. One large bell pepper finely chopped. Two and a half cups of sliced mushrooms, two teaspoons of dried basil, three quarter teaspoon dried oregano, quarter teaspoon dry thyme, and you know what I would do? Those are all really raw. The raw men! Then add eight cups of peeled chopped tomatoes. You can use canned if you want to cheat. One quarter cup of dry red wine or more. <laughs> Two tablespoons of parsley, two tablespoons of miso, which you're going to add at the very end of the cooking process. This is going to be the sauce for both of our pizzas tonight, um, our two varied pizzas. Now we're going to go over the whole wheat pizza dough crust. That's again in celebration of our second year <laughs> of production of All You Can Stomach. Yay! And the second time we've made pizza. Yeah, oh, we, we have done this before. <laughs> Pizza. We had it with kids, remember? Oh, right, right, right. Kids, kids. Yeah. Okay. Oh, those kids again. Okay, whole wheat pizza dough crust. Get your pens out. Two teaspoons of active dry yeast. That's one packet. Rapid rise works great. One and two thirds cup warm water. It's about 110 degrees. That means risk warm temperature. If it's not warm enough, it won't do its thing. If it's too warm, too warm it'll hot, kill your yeast. So be careful. Four cups of whole wheat flour. Quarter teaspoon black pepper, two teaspoons of salt. A brief reminder: this is a double rise recipe because wheat flour is very heavy and dense. We'll get back to you. Ah! Oh. Love you, baby. Okay. I love to love you, baby. <laughs> is that Ethel Merman? <laughs> Okay. Look at the sauce. It's beautiful. Look how saucy it got. Oh See God. that extra added ingredient? Tomatoes. That extra ingredient is goodness. I'm going to add a little bit of wine, which makes this sauce. Hey, stop wasting it. God. <laughs> Don't worry. It still goes into our systems. We're going to plop in the tomatoes. We're going to let this simmer for a couple hours. Two to three hours. Yeah, we're going to let it get really hearty and smooth. Then we're going to add the parsley and the miso, and it will be an incredible addition to our pizzas tonight. We'll get back to you. Momentary. It looks like salsa right now. Give me a tortilla chip. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> mmm, parsnip salsa. The time is 1977. The place, Berlin. David Bowie in a recording studio when his producer, Brian Eno, enters the room ecstatic, says, David, I have heard the future of pop music, and it is Donna Summer, I Feel Love. The producer, Giorgio Moroder, 
use the sequential circuits synthesizer as no one ever had before in the history of pop music. And this new dance sound mixed with a lush tangerine dream-like dance track would later influence other groups such as Blondie and so on. Now let's go back to that time that changed pop music forever while we cook some delicious pizza. We make a cake. Yeah. <laughs> cake first, pizza later. Pizza cake, as I like to call it. This is. Instead of pizza pie, pizza cake. Very, very special cake. It's called Mexican chocolate cake. Rich, dense, chewy Mexican chocolate. For those of you that aren't familiar with Mexican chocolate, what it is is chocolate with cement. And it's Ooh, thin. And our delicious. camera guy just pukes at the thought of that. But that's OK. And his head explodes. Yeah. And it's very constrict. <laughs> And he's keeling over! I can't wait to see it, actually. We should be getting this on camera. Let's give him an extra big piece. All right. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix our dry ingredients first. And what are our dry ingredients? We have two and a half cups of uh, regular old white flour. White flour, white yeah. Flour. We have um, about, it's supposed to be a full teaspoon of cinnamon, but it's a half a teaspoon for our cameraman, Jeff, because we don't want his head to really explode. That's right. A couple teaspoons of uh, baking soda. Soda because there is a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we've got how much cocoa here? About two thirds a, of a cup. Two thirds of a cup. Uh, two cups of sugar, I believe. Mm -hmm. And two tablespoons of cider vinegar. And uh, some water here that's tainted with our cinnamon. That's why it's off color. It's really not dirty water. Really? <laughs> okay, so let's mix these dry ingredients. <laughs> For you. Okay, mixer man. Can I please, please. mix the ingredients, please? Can <laughs> I mix the Only if you blow your nose. <laughs> okay, the cake takes me yeah. off. Oh, he blew it off. <laughs> oh! Gross. And he it out of the cake. He didn't let it go in the cake. Oh. No, pardon me. <laughs> Bad yeah. plastic surgery oh. job. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna add but the she... flour. Uh, whoop, there's our flour. And we're going to add the sugar, dry ingredients. It's very simple. Dry, wet. You want dry, your dry ingredients wet. to mix real well together. Right. Our cocoa. Ooh, and let our... me smell that. <laughs> mm, that smells like a cheap rubber novelty. <laughs> Cinnamon and baking soda. Cake, not. And we're going to just... Um, I'm just going to take control. Get this nose out of <laughs> Yeah, that'll oh, be wait, very efficient. Yeah, and besides, you know, if that melted in our Mexican chocolate cake, Jeff would really get sick. Not to mention the rest of us. Yeah. Oh, and you forgot to mention vanilla. We're supposed to also put vanilla in it. Right. So Do you I know where most of the, of the world's uh, vanilla is used? Where? In production of chocolate. What do you know? There's vanilla <laughs> in chocolate. So all the people that say, I don't like vanilla, I like chocolate. Well, <laughs> you have the goods on them, mister. <laughs> And okay. then there, a lot of chocolate has vanilla in, which is a fake vanilla. Now look at that. What look about that the white chocolate? Nicely mixed. See all those little yeah, white and the little brown things? All, it all, it all mixed away. together. Now we're going to yeah. add a third a cup of our vegetable well, oil. Okay, you're actually supposed to mix all the liquids together. And oh, well. Time. Well, screw that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we're we're oh, the whole thing's just gone to pot vanilla. now. Hello, I'm going home. Forget about it. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just say baking is not my cup of tea. You might want to use a spoon at this point. Uh, ah, maybe. Not. Yeah, maybe not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix our wet. It didn't even say that in the recipe, though. I tell you, oh, I read the recipe. Excuse me, what are you doing? Oh, oh I'm, 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 I'm the I'm, guest. I'm, I'm, sorry. Oops. I'm sure it's a little more bigger, lad. He's a year younger. So what we're gonna do is um, mix mix it up so it's nice and smooth, no big lumps. We're gonna bake it for about 45 minutes at 350 degrees. We're going to pull it out and then we're going to show you how to make the icing that we're going to top with blood red oranges later. You it's know, be good. why do people uh, cook the batter? It tastes more terrific when it's just batter. I <laughs> well, like it a lot of times way. it's got a... Uh, it's got raw egg in it. You don't want to eat yeah. it that way. <laughs> now, you don't want to take too long sitting this out either because it's got vinegar in it, which is working with the baking soda which is making bubbles. And if you let it make all the bubbles outside the oven, your cake's not going to have any bubbles in it. Right, and that's what makes that cake rise, which would eggs would normally do. But since this is a vegan recipe, uh, we're using cider vinegar, which is just a with baking soda. Yeah. If you had one of those little rockets, little plastic red rockets that you mix the 
put the baking soda in and pour vinegar in it. Now that's it all. That's Remember the serious that? science. You ready? This is homemade. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into this. I'm getting into this. Well, we need to pour it in the okay. pan. And you just wait, listen to what wait, I wait, said, Jeff. We got dry shit down there. <laughs> hey, it's a family show. I'm sorry. It's on late night. Don't <laughs> Well, it's on at eight. Yeah, we prime time. Well, you, some of you will be seeing this in real Oh, yeah, and, and for our time slot is switching for those of you that are watching and have been watching us faithfully. Um, but we don't sure. know when. We don't know when. And we won't tell you when because, inf unfortunately, the lottery that to determine that is going to take place before our next show or the possibility of our next show. And we're looking at having a couple reruns on. Uh, so we'll be on every month. Yeah. Every, we'll be on three times a month if you're lucky. And we hope you're lucky. <laughs> we hope we're lucky. Oh, God! What a big mouth you have, Jeff Rowe. One of my favorite parts. <laughs> oh, God! I want to throw up. Oh, Turn you're so squeamish. Oh, Going into the oven. Look, there's bubbles in it. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. It's, it's a bubbling, gooey mess. It's like when I go in the mud bath. 350 degrees, 45 minutes. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> We're here on Red Pepper News to bring you this exciting breakthrough in recipe action. Take it away, Genevieve. We're live here now as we go over the Mexican chocolate cake recipe. For those of you at home, best start writing quickly. This cake best recipe start. calls for two and a half cups of unbleached white flour, two cups of sugar, two thirds cup unsweetened cocoa powder. Make sure you get that sifted or you're in some serious trouble. Two teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of salt. Genevieve, I didn't sift it. Oh my god. We're in some. Turns out. We're in deep caca now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so two and a third cups of water, one third cup of vegetable oil, two tablespoons of white or cider vinegar. Cider vinegar, we found, works better. One teaspoon of vanilla. Now, we've mixed all of those ingredients together, but first we mix the dry ingredients and then we add the wet ingredients, but we didn't mix the wet ingredients, so we're really hoping that this works out, because if it doesn't, we're in deep caca. Like we'll you tell said. you about the icing later. Whoa. That's the wrap-up. You heard it here first on Red Pepper Television. News! News! This is not my beautiful wine. This is not my beautiful cabbage. This is not my beautiful host. <laughs> Same as it ever was. <laughs> what are, what we, are doing we doing here? What are we doing here? Oh, well, first, Jeffro's gonna punch that dough down. Punch it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, ladies, that's a real man. Woo. <laughs> job for a local uh, cable company. I can't say which one, but I work at a public access station. <laughs> How many are there? <laughs> wow, okay, let me think. These, these questions are so hard sometimes. Yeah, show. I can't do it. All right. So Jeff Rowe's going to knead this dough, and then he's going to replace I'm gonna it into the bowl. I'm going to knead it when I'm We're going to cover it up, and we're going to rise it again. Second rise. That would be the second rise. Sometimes. Right. And I'm not ready cabbage. to put it yeah. in a bowl. I like it too much. Well, you play with it. You can play with it as long as you want. We're going to go to the cabbage salad now, which is very fast and easy and a really swell, cheap thing to do if you're getting company and you want to feed a lot of people 
vanilla salad fact. This is sort of a, a gourmet coleslaw, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, what I did was I bought a small head of green cabbage and a little tiny head of purple cabbage, which I have a little bit left. It was a very small head of purple cabbage, but it's really cool. And it adds beautiful color. Yeah. And that's why I picked it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a dressing out of some cider vinegar. Some olive oil. Oh, I think the stove's huh. getting good now. And yeah. some Dijon mustard. Right here. Sculpt All right. That dough. Sculpt so that I'm dough. going to cut a little bit more purple cabbage. And after that, I'm going to add, I'm going to start cutting up my scallions. But I'm going to make the dressing before that because I think somebody else can cut the scallions. Yeah. Before that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, so, so we'll come back to. Uh, so okay. let's make the dressing. Oh, okay, let's make that dressing. That's easy enough. Yeah. And it is, and it's cheap. Yep. Oil, vinegar, mustard. Sometimes I put garlic in it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I put like poppy seeds Ooh, in it. Ooh, can we put some garlic in it? Seeds. Well, I thought since we had all the garlic and everything garlic. else, oh. I would not have it in this just for the. And it's that mustard that makes it nice and creamy. I'm going to switch it's just, just a vinaigrette, a plain old vinaigrette. Wow. If I could snort the garlic, I would snort it. <laughs> it would blow his head up to giant proportions. So there's a nice dressing. There's my cabbage. Just Are pour we marinating it this, Mary? Is that the yeah, we'll throw it in the it? fridge for a while because that makes it nice. It lets the uh, the flavors mingle and it gets it nice and cold and, and it, tasty. Do you find that it actually reduces the size of the cabbage when you do that, or does it stay pretty much the same crisp? Oh. No, it gets smaller. It gets quite a bit smaller. In fact, I'm probably going to add some cabbage to this off the air just so it looks as, as full. Sorry, right. Mr. Camera. Because uh, isn't it salt that sort of takes out the water in the cabbage? Is that the deal? Yeah, I haven't actually added any salt yet, but I was going to put some pepper in. I'm guessing that it's still pretty bulky, though. Yeah. yeah. It, oh, yeah. It's yet another high height. in bulk again. Instead of the Olestra potato chips, this is another way. You know, I hadn't heard of it. You know, I wasn't advertised. It takes a little more effort, but then you're like burning calories too. Yeah. Plus, you know what? That's a good thing. It's way better. Yeah. This yeah. Is Get in touch with your food, man. Have some good karma. All right. So only thing I'm gonna do next is chop these up, put them in the salad, and refrigerate it. And this yeah. is gonna rise again. Check it out. It's really, ooh, feel the girth. Can you absorb that? It's solid. <laughs> Can you? Okay, so let's uh, let's get to Jeff Rose Pizzas next, shall we? Sure. Ooh, there's a segue for you. Crispy cabbage salad. Very easy and very easy to vary to your taste. It takes eight cups or so of shredded cabbage, green and or purple, or that little uh, curly kind, I don't know what it's called. Um, bok choy? Mm, I think it's Savoy. Oh, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bok choy yeah, yeah. is a little tough if you don't um, Five to eight chopped scallions, or you can just use thinly sliced onions if you prefer, and that's what you have. Um, a fourth of a cup of olive oil, a third of a cup of cider vinegar, or whatever kind of vinegar you have sitting around your house. Uh, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, more or less. Salt and pepper. And that's it. You can vary that by adding different types of herbs or seeds or garlic. But I thought I would make this a little blander since everything else seems to be full of flavor tonight. And that the longer it marinates, the tastier it is. And the more it shrinks down. Okay, well, I kind of cheated a little bit tonight. We showed that other dough recipe, but this is dough that I stole from the restaurant where I used to work at, High Cora's Pizza on Madison. And, you stole uh, they, it? Did well, I they that said, correctly? They said, you know, we don't want to give it to you, but I said, well, you have a pizza 
named after me. You have a pizza named after me on your menu. So if you don't give me the dough, I'm suing. And that's, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's why I got the dough. The they called it up. Yeah. yeah. You can see down here, I've already started shaping the first dough, but I'm going to take you back through the process shaping the dough. You know, the key with this dough is, this is a Chicago-style pizza, and you make it with the high-gluten flour if you want to make this at home. But, wow. Uh, and if you can see over here, bubbles. that's why it's so bubbles. bubbly and puffy and soft. Yeah. Look now, this, it. it's this so cool. dough was actually made yesterday, but you can make a big batch, and you can uh, freeze it, and it's really great and stuff. The reason I didn't make the dough today is I, I used to make this kind of dough professionally, <laughs> and at one point... Uh, I would make a hundred pound batches of this dough every day, every day of the week. I would come in, I'm a baker, and I make dough and stuff. But the problem with making the uh, recipe for the show tonight is like, I don't know the metric system, and uh, you know, uh, it was hard making a hundred pounds down to one pound. <laughs> every cup, that I don't know, you know, one hundredth of a difficult. cup. Equals what how is one hundredth of a cup? Yeah. Is yeah, wow. So, yeah. But I'm it's beautiful and bubbly. and I'm starting um, to work the dough with my hands. I just stretch it out. This is like fun for kids if you have kids and stuff. Because, like, they enjoy working with the dough. It's like Play Doh. Like and you does. can't really make a mistake and stuff. Because, like, if, uh, if you do, you can, like, fix it later. And you can take this and spread it out on the table, you know. And the wow. kids can, like, cut out like uh, Play-Doh animals like Barney or whatever the kids are into these days. Nice. Or you can spin it to make it really light and fluffy, but watch the low ceilings. It's like, ah. I don't know, but like, Woo. you can make it like really. Wow. <laughs> gigantic pizza. You can make a, you can make a like, 25 or 30 inch pizza. Wow. Wow. Woo. wow. <laughs> now that's action. Wow. But look, if you get a hole you in it like I just did, it. If you put a hole in your pizza, you can still spread it out on a lot of flour. You always want to be using a lot of flour. You yeah. just take the hole and you just fix it right up and stuff. Nobody ever can taste the difference. No one ever knows because you put stuff oh, on top cool. of it and you hide it. But just make sure you patch it good or it's going to leak all over the place. You'll have a, a little soup bowl in the middle wow, of your that pizza. That is one amazingly light, fluffy crust, I must say. They make a mean pizza over at Pike Horrors, I should know. Look, well, oh no, can, like, what, what, we didn't hear that. He, works at <laughs> he knows what to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So anyway, professional. now, now what I'm going to do is like, you can use a, a cookie sheet if you want. At home, I can't make a pizza this wide because my oven's only this narrow. So it's like, they're kind of elliptical shaped pizzas over at my house. But uh, we can like use a screen or if you don't have a screen, you can use a cookie sheet. But I'm going to use the second one Is that still going to stay in a, a circle after See, you like, folded it up like that? I'm going to use the second one because like we were just having a little bit of fun with your dough. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't do this at home. I mean, <laughs> There's just, I mean, if you're in New That's York the, City and you're like, hey, whoop, dude, I'm entertaining tourists, you know, hey, you know, look at me, I got a crazy pizza and stuff. You can make it like this, but that's just for show, ladies and gentlemen. Your own kitchen, I mean, how many times do you light dishes on fire that you're preparing at home? It really doesn't help the taste that much. Just for show, you understand? Just for show. It burns off the alcohol sometimes. But this will give me a chance to review techniques. Really what that. I'm doing is I'm leaving a big puff in the middle. Because if you don't leave a big puff in the middle, when you um, go to spin it with centrifugal force, it like wears out the middle first. And you get like a hollow middle. But since I've left the uh, circle intact, the middle isn't any narrower, but my voice sounds funny behind this dough, than it would be <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> so let's put it down on the screen now. Yeah. Everything has got to have Smart. tons of flour on it. But another great thing to do is to add cornmeal to your, oh. because like oh, yeah. when you add the cornmeal, it like adds yeah. a whole new flavor to it, um, because like uh, it gives it that Chicago style that everybody forgets yeah. out here. Yeah. And it makes yeah. it hearty and nutty and like the corn flavor mixed with other flour is just so delicious. So he's gonna lay that out. <coughs> what I'm gonna do while he's doing that is do the sauce that we Where showed you earlier. Sauce? We've been, uh, we made our sauce because this is a different kind of pizza than the spinach stuffed crust pizza. We need to blend this one. We need a very smooth sauce and those root vegetables are pretty uh, fibrous. So let's do that right now. Whoops, there we go. And while it's spinning, 
want it to spin? Oh, yep, I want it to spin. Gotta keep I'm going to add a few things here. Turn, yeah, turn that inside one. Uh -huh. Pull it out. Or you can also pull the... No, I don't think you can. Pull That's good. Let's just do it that way. I'm going to add the parsley. And I'm going to add about a teaspoon of miso. Miso is this fermented soy. It's very salty. adds a lot of um, intense flavor. also an aphrodisiac and you yes. might have heard the uh, popular hit song Miso Horny. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So I think that's a call for a, a big call for a date with the right kind of woman out there for our special guest tonight. Just put it out there ladies. Ladies. I think I'm going to be a monk now. Catch. Catch. <laughs> I'm going back to the monastery. Just contact us. We'll set it up. Okay, I think we're done. There's our sauce. Wow. Mmm. Smells good. Woo. That sauce is something. Do we have a big light? Yeah. Do they, all right. So now we're going to take a big ladle of this sauce and spoon it all over that bubbly crust. Ow. That sauce <laughs> is a, hot. It's about a third of the sauce that I made. So that gives you an, an idea this about the like bulk no, no, of no, no. this situation. Well, you know. Spread it up. The, th the important thing is to make a really trippy swirl in it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's got to be very psychedelic. All the swirl. Like, oh. one that is the key. I'm thinking one flew over the cookie's nest right now. <laughs> I never get, the, get it on your uh, crust on the outside. Man. Wow, it's beauteous. Oh, the majesty. Oh, I'm in awe. Oh, oh, oh. Why can't we just have one, one more chance? One more. If we would get Save it right for sure Save next time, earth. everything would be perfect. <laughs> I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I would not make those same mistakes again. The important I... thing here is, like, you want to put some spice fresh on the top of your, like, sauce, because if you do that, then it's going to go right up through your cheese, and all the flavors will meld together as one. You need uh, now that's some, world uh, peace. What do you want? In a kitchen situation. Right now? We need some I garlic. I, I forgot to right grate it. I'm feeling really happy. This oh, is yeah. really positive. Yeah. Here's the garlic. <laughs> You know, and and some of that black pepper, too. Show we've ever some had. of that black pepper would be like, oh my god, that would be like black so pepper. rich. It's coming right there. This okay. is our last chance. A little fresh, fresh black pepper. pepper in here. And then this fresh basil. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, hold on, little microphone pepper. <laughs> I, this basil, it's got such a nose on it. If you could all, I mean, it has a nose on it like I had a nose on me before, but <laughs> this you can smell. This, the bouquet. This is going to go right along with our sauce. It's going to be so good, and it's going to like taste good with our spinach, too. Oh, this is wow. going to be so right. Divine. And like, under the cheese. Do you want some of this garlic under that, too? Hey, come back here. Yeah, all the garlic. Because uh, you really can't have too much garlic, I found. You know, all the garlic, maybe, uh, I don't know, any red peppers? Like uh, no. hot pepper. Ooh. Do we have No, we've hot been, we've been yet? like, we've been making it pretty hot for people right. tonight. Are they going to be able to take it? Yes. Because, I mean, if you can't take it. How many times do I have to agree? How many times do I have to emphasize the point that hot rocks? Right. It'll boost so your spirits. Just throw, just throw this go garlic ahead. on in a little bit. Okay, here we go. See, this is like fun. It's big enough pizza that like a lot of people can like work on the pizza at one time. That's why if you've got kids around and stuff, it's like you have to like put them to work and stuff because they've got to get used to the How idea. Much Am I right? You know, oh, absolutely. Oh, we've got plenty of spinach to layer it on. I'm just gonna mix it in with the basil, you know, because ooh, that's gonna be so nice under the cheese. Oh, yeah. Some people put it on over the cheese. I like to put it on under the cheese because it's like cheese. it doesn't it doesn't get all brown and yeah. stuff and that looks ugly. People don't want to eat pizza that's right. green and brown. That's usually a bad sign in pizza. Well, don't look for brown. This is weird. I feel like an artist right now. I, all right. Okay. Yeah. I like I'm the one with like I just said real cheese and stuff because like it can be fun if you're into cheese but you can always use fake cheese too man because I have had some fake food that like blew my mind you know <laughs> you know.
It tastes good to me. Uh, Are you I, vegetarian, Jeff? Well, uh, I just kind of slipped into all things in life, you know. We're, uh, <laughs> the standards uh, have dropped. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Well, this dough is amazing. <laughs> I got like 11 ounces of cheese on this one. But... Keep doing all right. Cheese. So this is like a pizza that's named after me. This is my. Wow. It's like on the menu and stuff, so like cool. I kind of have to like say that I eat them and stuff. But like mostly, you just make them on TV. These it's days. Like, we were talking about the fake pepperoni earlier and stuff, and if you should really try the fake pepperoni. Oh yeah, it's, it's like, great. As like a sometime meat eater and stuff, man, the fake pepperoni is it's really good. You know, My granddad really thought it was good too pepperoni. spicy. Well, you know what I think like about too know. spicy, you know. <laughs> I wanted okay. to tease him. So, I'll tell you too spicy when I'm email. dead, you know? Why don't we uh, talk about what else we're going to put on this pizza, how long we're going to cook it, and uh, get on, because we got a, another sure. recipe to do. All right. No doubt. Do you want any of those hot peppers on? Or did oh, you we got them in the sauce. Girl, I've been right. sprinkling, like and nobody's business. Lay down the broccoli and the zucchini, which I've like sliced up that? thin. and. The onions go on top for color. Okay. And if you had sun dried and tomatoes at home, this would make the pizza perfect because that is yeah, the secret. It's supposed ingredient. to have like sun dried tomatoes, but guess who like forgot what's the ingredients on their own namesake pizza? It's unbelievable. You know, that's a way to impress girls, Jeffrey. You take them to that place and go, look, here's my pizza. I know, I'm practically a celebrity well, with a pizza and everything. I mean, you know? that's better than a stranger ad. I mean, it's like Domino's like had Bigfoot, but this is like, you know, I'm right up there with Bigfoot. All right. So we're gonna and these like this in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. How long are we cooking it again? What's that time? We're Not cooking about 500 probably, degrees huh? for like, maybe like, um, if it's really preheated and we've got a special thing in here. Pizza stone, that's called. And, pizza um, stone, that's for official pizza makers. You want to have the oven like. Listen up. You got to have the oven hot to make this kind of pizza and stuff, to make it crispy and stuff. And uh, if you use a cookie sheet, make sure to get like everything good and hot, or otherwise it's not going to have the right uh, crunchability. Right. Crunchy and chewy. Crunchewy. I think that's the secret of this pizza. It's got to be crunchewy. Ladies and gentlemen, the pizza is now going in the I oven. give you the pizza. It's too big. The oven door won't close. Oh my goodness. Crisis situation. Is it really? No! We'll be back for more later. These doubled and this one has a signal that works well. It's time. Ah, oh, this thing's been sealed in here. We have to like tape it shut. Oh, that's gonna leave a nasty burn. Don't try duct tape on your stove at home. It's a very bad idea. Take this thing out. Oh my God! But look wow. at it. Perfectly oh my God, I feel goldeny like brown. One of those fancy it's restaurants. It's just like at a pizzeria, just Ooh. just like pizzeria style in Chicago. Yeah. No, it's New York style. New York style pizza. <sighs> We can still do a couple of things to this. We can like, oh yeah, put that down with that. You can burn your hand. Wow. Like Folks, this is the pizza of the century Ooh. right here. Real, genuine, Chicago pizza. And what's nice is to just take Let's the basil and night. sprinkle a little bit on top, just for a little color. You just sprinkle a little basil right on top for freshness after it's Ooh. cooked, you know? Freshness, yeah. And just do that by hand, you know? It's good to like, be in touch with your food, you know, touch your food, you know. I like to joke about like everybody that came into the pizzeria and stuff, it's like, ha, 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 ha I touch your food. <laughs> <laughs> touch everybody's food. Yeah, he's a witty one, all right. <laughs> and I'm single. Single, single guy, single guy. This is like Wayne's World cooking episode. <laughs> Another pizza. Oh, you want to what about that breadsticks? Recipe? Oh, breadsticks. You're making breadsticks now. Yeah, but no, we don't have to. Okay. Yeah, but. All right, let's take this. We can make the breadsticks, but I think we should jump to the pizza because some pizza I've never made before. It takes a few minutes. Let's come back to that. She's inexperienced. Trust me, uh, but uh, here it is now for Jeff Rose famous veggie. It's really simple. Start with the dough. Yeah, easier said than done. Start with the sauce. We talked about that before. 
12 ounces of mozzarella. I would recommend grating it, personally. Uh, spinach, you want to like uh, take it off the stalks because they're nasty. And uh, zucchini, cut it in little uh, crescents like the moon. And a cup of broccoli, small red onion, sliced up real thin. And two uh, tablespoons of garlic, that's about a clove to me. That's about a clove of garlic. Uh, I mean, when I say clove, I mean an entire head of garlic, just for the record. You can add... Just for the record. Add sun-dried tomatoes and fresh basil if you want. And... Yum! Ah. Yum, yum, okay. yum, yum! All right, next pizza. It's time to step back in time to your favorite 1970s natural restaurant for that extra heavy-duty <laughs> spinach, tofu, stuffed pizza. With whole wheat crust, 100%. Uh -huh. And this is, let me tell you, this is 100% better because we've updated it with a 90s twist. Oh, good. Let's talk about that. Okay, right. the ingredients. We have our dough that we made for you earlier, our whole wheat dough. It's risen twice now. It's, it's nice split and in half. Yeah, it's not quite as bubbly as Jeff Rose. No, but it has gotten puffy. It's risen a couple times, so it's This is Chicago out. style, not New York. Wrong. Chicago style. Wrong. Chicago style. Let's see. Okay. So I'm we from have. Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Surprise, You're surprise. Wacky. <laughs> okay, onions, parsley, uh, dried basil, fresh garlic, mushrooms, tofu, spinach, olive oil and our homemade best in the world at least mary and i decided this very special oh yeah piece oh of sauce. the sauce the sauce tastes so good high it's fiber all in the sauce high fiber okay all right. so uh high fiber for that high fiber <laughs> time to finish up this whole damn pizza business and eat. What do you think? You know, I'm getting a little hungry myself. All right. And I'm sure our <laughs> guests bar. would enjoy some delicious... <laughs> if I don't miss my guests, that's feta cheese in there. You said you were making this a uh, vegan dish. <laughs> what are you doing with feta cheese? Let me tell you something, Missy. Food police. What we Let have see here your licenses. is some <laughs> extra firm tofu. It is deceiving. And I'm adding about a teaspoon of olive oil and I'm going to blend the ingredients I told you about earlier, which would be, Mary, would you mind handing me that sizzling hot sauteed onion? No, use the pot holder. Yeah, I'll use the pot holder. Here. Onions and spinach and mushrooms, and garlic, and uh, we put a little bit of basil in there. That looks kind of Greek to me. Kind of well, it's, it, has, it has a Greek feel to it, yes. It feels I Greek to me. I feel like dancing. <laughs> What I'm going to do now is I'm going to blend this mixture until it's smooth as silk. Are we, is everyone ready for a big blending segment? Mm. Mm. Engage. No, 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 we're not engaged. No, you're not engaged. What's up here? Did you put the blade this in right? This newfangled machinery no, confounds right. me at every turn. Oh, my. That's not right. This is very stressful. I had it right <laughs> the first time. In the old days, we used to hook it to a giant windmill and have the yaks drive until it was creamy. Now, with your appliances, you have far fewer yaks, and you need far less cleanup. <laughs> Here we go. Thank God. We're blending it up. We're going to blend it until it's creamy, creamy smooth. I'm pulsing. Yes, pulsing. Put that in the blender and hit crepe. Then what we're going crepe. to do will amaze you, because this truly is a splendidly healthy pizza. Tell me more, but the cheese camera person can be here to have it because she doesn't like cheese. But wait a minute, isn't that cheese? Nutmeg. A little bit of nutmeg. Secret ingredient on this dish. It's from I'm Kroger. I'm gonna sprinkle it in. That's an Ohio. Freddy Kroger. Okay, here we go. Let's blend it up. It's looking kind of green. It's looking creamy and green. If one didn't know better, one might think there was dairy in this here dish. Like Wait a minute. Or something. It's yeah. not easy being green. <laughs> I heard. Okay. Oh, oh I think easy. we're ready to spread this lovely ensemble. Look at the fresh green color. Oh, God, it smells great too because we sauteed all those ingredients together. These aren't just raw ingredients. Wait a minute. Isn't that the first harbinger of spring? <laughs> I don't mess my guess. Really if ever I saw a harbinger, that yeah. would be it. Can I tell you guys something really funny right now? Yeah. OK, 
Okay. Tell um, it. Like the sauce is supposed to go on the pizza first. What are we going to do? I guess we'll have to take it out. No, we'll just put it on yeah. second. Yeah. We'll put it on Absolutely. second. Absolutely. <laughs> Improvisation I like here the way you in think. action. What's up with that parsley? When do we put the parsley in? Oh, we'll just throw that next. What's I the lemon like juice for? The cut of your oh. <laughs> we added the lemon juice earlier, somewhere along the way. I'm really not sure when, because we've done so many dishes tonight. Well, and you know what the special so secret steps. ingredient is? Goodness. <laughs> Okay. Sounds like Wonder Bread. Right. Sorry, look at that creamy mixture. It looks like ricotta, doesn't it? It's really a, a nice uh, imitation. So you could use this as a <laughs> filling in um, like lasagna. Yeah. Like a you vegan can, lasagna. You can make that little, would be mini, nice. um, little, little mini calzones like you were talking about earlier. Yeah, That's that true too. Oh, oh, we could totally do that. Yeah. We Except could do we're that. using this. Silly. Okay, we're going to throw some fresh parsley on. Whoa. We're going to add our sauce. Oh, that's a lot of sauce. Ooh. That's a lot of sauce, but that's all right. We're just going to lump it down. Keep it saucy. Mm. This is our, and we didn't blend the sauce because this is a little bit chunkier of a pizza. Because our the other layers. Because it's a pizza pie. Smooth. Mm. Right. Pizza pie. Then um, we already pounded in our crust. This is a skillet. Remember, iron skillets not only give you iron, but you can bake and fry in them. That's right. Multi-purpose. We're going to put the second part of the crust. I split it in half on after the second rise. And we're going to um, kind of nail it down the sides here and seal in all those with delicious nails. juice. With nails. your fingernails, <laughs> not real nails, just your fingernails. Yeah. Right. Now, would you consider this more of a dessert pizza? What with the <laughs> pistachio pudding inside? <laughs> Let's plug up that hole there. <laughs> yeah. We're going to bake this anyway. at 500 degrees for 10 minutes. Thank you, we're going, boy. We're going to turn it down for... Um, to two or to 400 degrees and cook it for 20 more minutes and then this gorgeous magnificent beast of a healthy pizza will be ready that and we black will magic that voodoo that you do so well. okay. time to review the second anniversary spinach stuffed pizza a reminder of the 70s <laughs> eight ounces of firm tofu half a teaspoon of salt one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, one and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil, one medium onion, finely chopped, one large clove of garlic, minced, one quarter cup minced fresh parsley, one quarter teaspoon fresh grated nutmeg, which adds just a slightly uh, distinct flavor. Mm, and then we have- Nutty. What's that? Nutty. Nutty, yeah, nutty. Like we are tonight. Uh, one tablespoon fresh minced basil, eight cups chopped spinach, and I actually used less spinach and added a few mushrooms, which we sauteed together for a fragrant flavor. And it's all now baking together in our wheat crust with our homemade tomato sauce that we showed you earlier this evening. For 500 degrees, 10 minutes, 400 degrees for 20 more. God knows what's good for you. You don't know what you're up against. You'll eat it. Time to finish up the Mexican chocolate cake that we started earlier. We have dumped our cake out onto its uh, front side so that there's little tiny holes to absorb the icing that we're about to show you. This is a very exciting step, so watch closely. Well, I'm going to go over the ingredients quickly and then we're going to start the process. We have our cocoa powder, we have our pecans, we have our sugar, we have our vanilla, we have our cornstarch our blood oranges as a garnish, our oat milk instead of soy milk, and uh, all of our ingredients here are ready to be assembled. So what's going to happen now is we're going to mix the sugar and the cocoa in our saucepan. Oh, master mixer, please mix. My, is that saucy and wholesome. <laughs> yes, we're not on the heat yet, otherwise we would be scorching the ingredients. Over here in our smaller bowl, we're going to mix our soy or our soy milk, which we're actually using oat milk. Um, it's quite a refreshing difference, actually. You'll really enjoy it. But whatever you've got on hand, sometimes the um, type of milk that you use will influence the flavor, so experiment a little bit. We encourage experimentation on this show, although not with drugs because we're family oriented. There's no need to encourage that. No, no, not at all. Okay, so over here, Mary is hey, whisk your whisk over here for a second, Jeff. Yeah, whisk, whisk this. Switch it up, man. Don't switch mind it up. if I do. Whisk away, whisk away. Okay. Look at how it gets that rich. What's man. going to happen is we're going to mix Wildly. our dry ingredients um, along with our soy milk and our cornstarch 
We're gonna get all the lumps out. We're gonna heat it up over here on our little heater. Go ahead and mix it up. We're going to stir it for seven to 11 minutes until it's glazed. And then we're going to glaze our cake. Great. So hang in there and we'll check back with you momentarily here as we cook this for seven to 11 minutes, as you should be. Okay, thing. now we spread it on with this thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Look at our lovely Mardi Gras boy. This is so incredible. We've got this wonderful, dark, rich, chocolatey frosting. Hold this off the edge here. And the secret is that I learned from Mary is that cooling the frosting gives it this extra glossy sort of richness and also thin. keeps it from running completely uh, out. What's that about Betty Crocker again? The texture is marvelous. What we're going to do is we're going to um, put some pecans and some oranges on the top and voila. What was that? Was that your beeper? No, it's fine. So to me. <laughs> Yay, icing, the finishing touch. One and a half cups of sugar. One and a third cups of unsweetened cocoa powder, sifted. Two cups of soy milk, two thirds cup cornstarch, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And you cook it up and you make a wonderful glaze. And it's time to eat, finally. Finally. All right. Woo, we made it. Wow. Dinner time. We have some wonderful pizza, giant pizza. Thick pizza pie, two layer, Chicago style stuff. Yeah, whole wheat flour, non whole wheat flour, can of salad, chocolate cake. Delicious. Wow. What an ensemble. It's so time to eat. I think I need and that don't nice forget, cookie. it's the anniversary episode. Ah, happy anniversary! Join us for our third year. That's right, no, I ate out. the other eater. Scooping that up, scooping that out, you guys. Yay! Oh! <laughs> I'm not used to having a hat on. <laughs> oh. Alright, this looks obviously. awesome. I can smell this from the I'll actually away. get some food this time. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. I still want it hot. I'm gonna pass this camera out pretty quick. Oh, oh. oh. Huh. Quite an honor, nonetheless, and I'm glad to see that uh, I can enjoy the delicious food. Mm, I wanted to get it while it was hot, too. Mm, this is so good. Mm. Oh, wait, aren't there two pieces? Yes, there are. You're eating some. <laughs> that's right, I'll be eating one very big and one is very flat. <laughs> okay, that's good. Just like a lot of things. And then what we generally do is the out, Jeffro, we just start moving the hell out of the camera until it turns into blur and then we fade. Good night, folks. Where's the fade button? I tried to get to the camera. Ah. Just stop it. We'll just cut on that. Bye-bye.